Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to have the opportunity to provide a message to this conference. The Secretary General has expressed particular concern over the design and acquisition of new technologies with unclear or potentially dangerous destabilizing applications. That is why the third pillar of agenda for disarmament includes a set of actions designed to raise awareness on these challenges through regular studies and reports and by supporting dialogues such as this one. I would like to commend Germany for convening a further iteration of this conference, which has become an important platform for high-level engagement on arms control and emerging technology. Since 2018, one of our primary platforms for raising awareness has been the report on the current developments in science and technology and their potential impact on international security and disarmament matters, now in its third edition. The latest report provides a comprehensive overview of developments in various fields, including artificial intelligence, autonomous systems, and biology and chemistry, as well as technologies in the areas of aerospace, digital, electromagnetic, and material science. We outline five areas where the common and interconnected concerns associated with new weapons, means, and method of warfare pose a potential challenge to the maintenance of peace, security, and stability. First, a number of new weapon technologies have the potential to contribute directly to arms competition, including at the strategic level. Examples related to nuclear weapons and strategic security include anti-missile systems, hypersonic weapons, and destructive counter space systems. Developments in artificial intelligence and autonomy may also have potential to trigger arms competition. Second, some new weapon technologies may have the potential to lower threshold for the use of force. This is especially true for remotely operated and autonomous systems that may be used in situations where the use of force was previously not feasible or deterred by risks to one's own armed forces. Third, many new weapon technologies effectively reduce the decision-making time for opposing forces to respond, thus contributing to crisis instability. This is particularly the case for weapons that travel at high speeds that are designed to be undetectable or that cuts humans out of decision-making processes. And it is a particular problem for dual use systems that can be either conventionally or nuclear armed. Fourth, some new weapon technologies pose a challenge for attribution and could result in unintended escalation and consequences. This has been a significant problem in the malicious use of digital technologies and an increasing concern related to military drones and even cruise missiles. Fifth, many new weapon technologies can easily be acquired by malicious non-state actors. The barrier to acquiring new and destabilizing technologies is often much lower than traditional conventional weapons. And yet, especially in combination with the other challenges I have just described, the risks can be much greater. It is my hope that broader recognition and awareness of these five cross-cutting concerns can help drive our priorities for exploring how to best employ the tools of arms control without hampering development. Thankfully, many of the most critical emerging weapon technologies are already under active deliberations within the United Nations. In the difficult circumstances this year, I commend states for their flexibility and ability to carry on with substantive work in the area of ICTs and autonomous weapons 
as well as to explore newer processes on outer space. In conclusion, I wish to point out two areas where our arms control approaches need to adapt in order to adequately respond to the challenges of emerging technologies. First, we need regular, sustained, and intensified intergovernmental dialogue. That includes the initiation of new studies and processes on issues where international dialogue is still lacking, including on missiles and armed drones. Second, we need to continue integrating multiple stakeholders into both our deliberations and into the design of our solutions. Norms of responsible innovation can complement norms of responsible state behavior in some sectors. In others, private actors may be able to fill gaps in our collective ability to ensure attribution, accountability, and the verification of new rules and practical measures for arms control. I hope these perspectives provide food for thought, and I wish you all the best for a fruitful discussion. Thank you.